Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. I pray that you guys are continuing to stay safe and sanitized. I hope you guys are continuing to wear your masks. I also pray that you guys are having a great week so far. So before I kick off the show, I always like to start with thanking our sponsors. The Shelly Roy Show is sponsored by Built on Survival Skills Apparel. We're also sponsored by Liquid Lipo, where you could lose up to a pound a day. For tips on how to become a boss, be sure to check out ShellyBossUp.com. I also want to thank my makeup artist, Amber Singletary, and my photographer, Stephen Tucker. So you guys stay tuned. Don't go anywhere because up next, we have the owners of Diamond Mink Collection, music producer Tone P and Mr. Antoine Jones himself. Up next, after the break. Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back to The Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, and my first guests are owners, CEO, and COO of Diamond Mink Collection. You guys help me welcome Miss Ebony Hutchinson and her daughter, Diamond. Welcome, you guys. <laughs> welcome, lovely ladies. <laughs> How are you? Amazing. Awesome. Thank you so, for You look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. And you are more than welcome. And it's an honor to have you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Definitely. So before we get into you guys' business, mm -hmm. I have to say on record again, I don't know what the secret is, but the fact that I couldn't tell who was who, who was the mom and the daughter, like you guys are both. Thank really, you. really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we get that all, all the time. time. <laughs> so it's not just me. No. <laughs> it's not just me. I was literally staring at the flyer like, oh, my God. And what helped me was the email mm -hmm. thread. So if it came from Diamond, I think your name was at the bottom. Yes. And if it came from you, your name it was, was at, at the, the bottom. bottom. So right. that was, was kind of helpful. <laughs> right. But I was just like, oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's get into it. So tell me who Ebony Hutchinson is and what's your story. Um, just the whole story behind Diamond Mink. Just tell me who you are first, oh, okay. and then we'll, we'll get into that. Okay. Yep. Well, I'm Ebony Hutchinson. Um, let me see. It's okay. No. Workout enthusiast. Just keep going. Okay. okay. Workout enthusiast. <laughs> yes, I love to work out. So I know what I usually do is I get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. I work out for at least an hour. That's good. That's good so stuff. Maybe about two hours a day. That's good stuff. Um, I run my hairline. I'm into the real. Well, I'm getting into the real estate business now too. Okay. And also, I'm merging off to a whole different. 
As you feel now, but I don't want to talk about as it. As you should. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to be multifaceted. Of you course. have to have of multiple course. things coming okay. in. So what about you, Miss Diamond? Who is right. Miss Diamond? <laughs> Miss Diamond is someone who was almost finished with college. Amen. Give Ten it up for credits her, guys. Give it up. <laughs> Yay. You said ten cre credits to go? Ten credits left. I'll be yes. done by December. I am majoring in media and communications, like I was telling one of your producers. So okay. it's really interesting to even just be here and see how awesome. the whole setup is. I also run my own run the business with mom, Diamond gotcha. Main Collection, which we started in high school when I was in high school, okay. my senior year, which was great. Okay. And I am also working at a radio station right now, which I love as well. I love talking to people, engaging with Look people, interaction. It's really fun. I love that. Mm -hmm. You guys make sure you keep an eye out for Diamond. She's <laughs> up and coming and on the move for sure. <laughs> so which is a perfect segue to you guys' business. Yep. So whose idea was it to birth Diamond Collection? Diamond Mink Collection? Oh, me. Me, me, me. Okay. So, um, so talk to me about the mindset behind that and how that came about. How it came about. All right, so Diamond was on the way to college. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my fiance, he was like, look, most most kids that go, I mean, most parents, most parents that have kids in college, we're called broke parents now. Broke and, best friends. Broke <laughs> best friends. <laughs> and me and Diamond, well, we weave all the time, even though our hair is down our back, but I just love the whole thing of weave because you can color it, you can put the heat in it, and, your, you know, your real hair won't break off. Been there. So, yes. at the time, bundles that just came out, so for three bundles, we will pay 600 So, I will pay 600 I will pay 600 for her three bundles, and then we will have to pay... I think it was 150 at the to time. To get it installed. To, to get it installed. Wow. He was like, hell no. Yeah. <laughs> Don about to go to college. You guys got to think of another he way. He got it quick, <laughs> right? He got it Dad quick. Dad on. Wow. So I started doing my research. I was like, look, what we going to do, Don, we're going to have to try to find a vendor and Good. wholesale it and buy a box of hair. And one day I was like, I'm going to just put it out there and just see what people say. I would just put it on my social media. I was like, I'm about to open up Don and Mink. I'm about to start a hair company. Need like, some vendors. Oh my God! No, I already I did the vendor thing. I was wholesaling first. Gotcha. This girl I like down in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and then I paid for the plug. Nice. The plug was probably about thirty five hundred dollars, and I mean I waste a whole lot of money. But that's what you got to. Well, do you got to. I was going to say yeah. you got to learn somewhere. So the <laughs> fact that learn. you actually yeah, yeah, went yeah. through that process, the yeah. great part is in the process. Yeah. So the fact that you guys went through that, it's amazing. Amazing. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about the process so we're at one point feeling like the world was opening back up and we were beginning on one path but now with this new variant being back out there it seems like we may be going in the opposite direction so did COVID impact you guys' business and I'll ask you that Not question really. Diamond. how did it if it did impact your business? It impacted it slightly just because you know a lot of our vendors are coming from out the country. Okay. So that shut down a lot of stuff but we had to make it work. We found new vendors, we you know got new connections, we started wholesaling certain items again right. just because you know it was a shutdown. A lot of things were closed and they were taken as they should have safety precautions of just course. to make sure everything was you know coming into the states if it was coming out the country that it was verified and mm -hmm. that it was safe and that everything was cool but now, you know, we pick back up. Things are better. Good. Things are a lot better. better. Yeah, that's and we've really learned, a, you know, you learn something new every day. Different. Which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're prepared, especially this time. If we do go back into quarantine, which I'm hoping we do not. I hope not <laughs> either. But I just hope do. that we do a better job. <laughs> yeah. It's really listening and just and following instructions. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. simple. It's simple. Just I walk around my mask all the time. Sanitize. <laughs> too. Yeah. Just especially places where, you know, people are touching stuff a lot, like gas exactly. stations and things like that. But Diamond Mink's definitely picked back up yep. a whole lot. We've gained a lot of new following. Yep. We're rebranding a lot of things right now, that. working on expansion and everything. And we're definitely prepared going back into if we do have another quarantine. We have everything awesome. set up. And I think it will be great. That. Yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that. So same with your experience. Uh -huh. I used to be a big weave person. Yeah. Like you said, my hair was naturally long down my back. Yep. But for the reasons of, you know, not really putting a lot of the strain and the stress on the hair, yep. mm -hmm. you know, I just wanted to, you know, do the weaves. But now, since I'm completely bald, 
by my own choice yeah. because for me, hair doesn't rock make it. me. You can be beautiful yeah. without hair. That's so true. Thank hey. you so much. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm an eyelash girl now. Yeah. And we so with that being lashes. said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say that, but I was yeah. going to say I saw that you guys had lashes yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in addition to the hair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, what would you say, and I'll ask you this question, what would okay. you say is your number one product or your best seller? Uh -huh. The hair or the lashes? Okay, the, well, the best seller now are wigs. Okay. Everybody want a wig. Okay. I mean, they, when we get them, they're gone. Wow. Like, before we even get them done. Really? They're, they're really already like, pre-sold. Yeah. Really? So that goes back to the marketing yeah. and the advertising. The advertising. Mm -hmm. So you guys have found a wig vendor, I'm assuming, that makes of the wigs? Of yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. They come. So, and we got different types. You can get curly, straight, body wave. We have the. Um, you can get blunt bob cuts. Yeah, you get the blunt cut. And nice. any color. Any color. Any color. Yeah. Any and, color. and before that, and what really got us out there was we connected with maybe about two or three different celebrities, celebrities influencers nice. on IG. I love that. And it was amazing. I just so thought about it one day. Uh, it's about network. You got to get yourself out there. You, you got to get yourself out there. I love that. Even I if you can't in person, you can do it over social media because of how big it's gotten now. Oh, the marketing. Yeah. You have to use the platform. You do. You got to use the platform. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So do you guys have a storefront? And the reason that I ask, like for with your wigs and things like that, do you guys, you know, invite people to come so that you can do the installs for them? Because it's one thing to buy a wig online, but then mm -hmm. you don't, don't like really know it. how to, it's well, not even up. so much of not it liking in. it, but you just don't know how to install it. You don't mm -hmm. know how to style it. Right. So do you guys offer that service as well? No, we or? Don't. Okay. But we That's are fine. connected with several stylists in the DMV area that we send nice. to. The best. Yep. We're very much connected with them. So, you know, if you have a question or concern about it, like, hey, I just got my frontal wig and I don't know how to install it and I don't want to install Love it. That. And, yeah. you know, it not look how it's supposed to. We're like, well, we have, what area are you in? Perfect. Is usually our first question because we have several different stylists all around Maryland, DC, we and Virginia that I love we can that. refer you to. Yeah. I love and, that. And, and, and from a consumer's right. perspective, that's important because, mm -hmm. like we were just talking, the hair and the wigs aren't cheap. No. So you you don't want to buy something and not know how to use it and feel like you're stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. fact that you guys basically see the actual customer through, I'm going to call it the life cycle, if you will, until they get it installed and styled. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's yep. about the experience it and is. the service. So mm -hmm. that's that's great that you guys are doing that. Mm -hmm. Customer service is our number one priority. Oh, yeah, I love that. Definitely. Well, I can't yes. wait yes. to try the lashes. <laughs> I definitely, I'm, I'm a lash girl, so I'm going to be blowing y'all up just for, just for the lashes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. For sure. So I'm going to ask both of you this okay. question um, because I do believe since both of you are in business, mm -hmm. you guys experience the same thing, but it kind of affects you guys differently. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the hardest part of being an entrepreneur or a business owner? Mm, I would definitely say managing your time. Okay. Yeah. And time management is very important when you're an entrepreneur, especially if you have other obligations sure. and other things you have going on. Like for me, I have school. Yeah. And then, you know, I also have a full time job. Yeah. And then I'm also trying to run a full time business. Absolutely. So time management is very important. That's Setting key. days and times and having a set schedule when you're able to move around things and really plan ahead of time is mm -hmm. really important. So because we do things like pop up shops, mm. and we travel for events and we do different things like that to really network and stay connected with all our dolls. We call our customers Diamond Dolls. Diamond Dolls. dolls. Yes. Hashtag Diamond Dolls. That yes. is so cute. <laughs> so we want to stay connected with all of them, make sure that they see us face to face because that's very important as well. Since we do not have a storefront just yet, but we are working on it. We're working on it. That's oh, it's why. coming. Oh, it's, it coming. it's coming. It's coming. Look it's out coming. for it. Yeah, it's Listen, coming. It's coming. I would agree with you in, in the sense of time management. Mm -hmm. That's key. It is. Because if you can't manage what you're doing, you're not going anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest key. So same question to you. What do you feel like is the biggest part or the biggest challenge of owning a business? Um, let's see. The biggest, I would say the money part, the budget part. Gotcha. <laughs> the budget part in, of course. in terms of like payroll, in terms of no, trying to like, figure out what's going to be. Um, not overspending, allocated inventory. for certain thing, inventory. inventory. Okay, yeah, stuff like gotcha. that. Yeah. So you, you know, you want this, you want this at this one time, and then you order all this stuff. You're like, okay, 
I hope it sell. You know what I'm saying? I hope I get rid of it. That part. Because <laughs> you already spent all that money to get in, so you're like, oh, my God. So you get scared. You get frightened. But you got to make it happen. You definitely you gotta have make to it make, it happen. Happen, make it happen. But I feel like because I'm such a girly girl, mm -hmm. you know, makeup, hair, lashes, presentation, everything, I feel like you can't go wrong with the hair. It's, yeah. it's going to sell no matter what. It is. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't think you guys are going to have a problem with Oh, uh, no. Not no more. <laughs> it's still a worry, though. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys are doing a good job pushing it. Of I course, mean, every baby. time Appreciate. I get on Instagram, it's coming down my timeline. It's and coming down my timeline. Like that. So that's, that's really important. You guys are definitely being seen. You guys are definitely putting in the work. Thank you. So continue to do that. Mm -hmm. So what would you say are some of your success habits? Success habit, um, I would definitely say the community that we've built so far. Mm -hmm. The community that we have right now, really supportive, very um, engaging. Whenever mm -hmm. we have events, they all pop out for us. They all that. pull up and you know purchase all our very stuff. Supportive. They make us sell out, very supportive. So mm -hmm. our community definitely has our back. Our Diamond Dolls definitely always support. You can see it even when we post something. Everyone's, you know, re reposting it. The engagement. Yeah, it's really nice to see. And it makes you feel like your efforts are, you know, valued. So that's really, it's really, really important good. to me. Yeah. Really good. It feels great when you put all that work in and then you and see you that see it's it actually, yeah, you, you see the results and it's good. Yeah, no, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we're really working on now, and I think it's probably one of the hardest things we're working on now, is like, trying to find influencers because when we first started we had an ambassador her name was malaysia pargo of mm -hmm. vh1 mm -hmm. i remember her yeah, yeah so she um she was with us for about a year mm -hmm. so now we already know the ins and out now <laughs> yeah. Yeah. of having an influencer Absolutely. and an ambassador on the team so now what we're basically doing is going back and forth like trying to make sure we find the perfect one to the represent perfect diamond, diamond yeah. Man. yeah it has to definitely fit it, it has, has to, to be fit. that perfect yeah. alignment yeah. for yeah. sure yeah. 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 and i know you guys will find it oh yeah mm -hmm. for sure yeah. 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 definitely so that's what we're working on now and then also trying to find something not too big but something small where we can have a storefront and have people actually come in because the wigs are big now yes they so, are yeah. that's never going to go out of style no. so i, I no. can't wait i definitely <laughs> can't wait it's only going to evolve oh yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah yeah so what advice would you give to well before i ask that question mm -hmm. um because you guys have some amazing products you have the custom wigs you have the hair you have the eyelashes what would you say sets you apart from the competitor i would say what sets us apart is our product our um definitely the value of our product we have very high luxury product mm -hmm. and it's at a very nice price that's very affordable because we have a lot of college student women you know their their parents are buying basically everything for them because they're full-time living on campus mm -hmm. so we have very affordable products for them we have affordable products for the full-time working women nine to five we have you know all types of products available for everybody to be able to you know look beautiful and enhance that beauty that they already have i love which that which is very important perfect so answer. i would definitely yeah, just yeah, say yeah. that i love that so last but not least mm -hmm. tell everyone what the website is okay. and what your social media handles are oh. okay say it again say it again i'm sorry no worries it, what did you say? let everybody know what your website is website. and what your social media handles are okay so the social media is um for facebook diamond Mint collection uh, for instagram diamond Mint collection the website is www.diamondmintcollection.com and you what are your social media handles my personal one is at queen dot dime yes <laughs> <laughs> i just had to recreate it because yes. i know the importance of branding not branding. just yourself but also your business, your business as well people like to see who they're purchasing from especially Absolutely. when it's you know a little bit more expensive than the usual purchase I agree with that. so definitely queen dot dime follow us and then she gave us all our instagram handles for our business page and we also have a twitter too diamond mink C O L That's and right. the number one as well. Yeah, just trying to stay, you know, on top of all the social media sites. We also have a TikTok Diamond Mint collection as well. Perfect. Started and that one. <laughs> all right. Thank so she's trying to get so me much. into TikTok. I'm like, not yet. <laughs> TikTok is another way. It's another sure. way. It oh is. yeah. Thank you both for Thank being you here. So we Thank you so much. Yes. We couldn't so wait. We're gonna... was excited. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you guys will. I gotta have you guys back next time. Please. As okay. you get a new product. So <laughs> okay. stay tuned. We're gonna take a short break and we will be right back. Thank you. Oh my God, it's so scary sitting up here. <laughs>
Was we okay? Yes, you were. Did we do okay? Yes. See, he's scared because he was like this. Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? To say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. Out, he's fired. Fired! We have breaking news in our national league now. We're learning new details about the Las Vegas gunman. New information and video on those reports of that car crash we were looking at in Charlottesville. Yesterday on the show, we spoke about the killing of Philando Castillo, right? And the verdict that exonerates the police officer who shot him. I'm oh, yeah. not going to blame everybody. Are these people who, you know, they want to protest. This is America. This is what we do. I heard this is America. Never that you'll ever see And see, that's just the trick of the trade It's business, you see They use the ignorance of the world As leverage to thrive Making this the land of the free What opportunity is high Don't get it twisted, I love it Cause you can be something Cause many other places you'll find Your options is nothing I heard this is America I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my next guest is a platinum music producer. You guys help me welcome Mr. Tone P. Welcome, Tone. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, for sure. So glad that you could be here. Likewise. For sure. Likewise. Thank you. For sure. Um, so before we get into your album, I know you're here to promote the album. Absolutely. And everything. So for those of us who aren't familiar with who you are, tell us who Tone P is and what's your story. Ooh. 
I can say a lot, you know, because <laughs> I'm going to start off saying I'm a father. I'm a mentor to a that. lot of people. Uh, Much needed. I'm a producer. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover of music. Um, I'm forever a student. Um, I'm a, I've been an artist since, I, you know, since the Southwest days in D.C., you mm -hmm. know, down in uh, 106. And, you know, that's how it all started. Gotcha. You know, and just pursuing a passion, you okay. know, and then using your influence to inspire others. So, you know. That's what it's about. Yeah, it really is. That's definitely what it's about. Mm -hmm. So being a lover of the music, what type of music did you grow up listening to? Oh, man. Like, I you mean, know, D.C., our culture from is go-go, so, so. Yeah, I mean, this whole area. So it's like, you know, like, again, I'm from Southwest. Mm -hmm. So I grew up, you know, I was a young and a teenager, you know, through, you know, early 2000s, the 90s mm -hmm. and whatnot. And our city was, it was just go-go. It wasn't rap. Right. Right. There was it was actually corny to be a rapper. You got right. laughed at to be, exactly. or if you was like Scarface and you came to DC, <laughs> you had to, you know, do a set with backyard or you yeah. really wasn't doing a set. Right. You know, it was a different set of rules back then. So, um, yeah, I, I was in I was heavy engulfed in the go go. I was in a go go band, mm -hmm. you know, in high school, U T B shout out the Untouchables, y'all they yeah. Yeah. It started shout there. out for U T B. Yeah. I yeah, remember that there. for sure. And from there, I just that that is what's giving me my identity, and that's what's giving me my, um, yeah, it's, it's giving me my identity. That's what, ha and that's what, that's what has given me my respect over the years with being in the music industry. Like, okay, it's not just so that was going to be that, my next question. Yeah, it's plenty of people that make beats, but what makes you different is your niche, and that's my right. niche, and it's where I'm from. You know? So is that a part of what tone means? Like just listening to the tone of the music, the sound of well, the music. That, that no, nobody's ever made that make sense like that. So actually, Tony, my middle name is Anthony. Okay. Tony. Got Tony. it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And so me and my cousin, we was trying to find like cool names okay. for producers. Because like, when you said music lover, I'm like, okay, well maybe that's where the tone. Nah, just nah, just nah. having that ear. That for connection the music. makes sense though. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, it's just Tone. My last name is Price. Gotcha. So Tone P. My cousin name was Craig. Yeah. So Craig B and Tone P. <laughs> Real cheesy, but that you know it we works. Was so that's how it worked. It you know? works and then though. It stuck with us throughout the years, you know. I love that. Yeah. So being a lover of the music, mm -hmm. being multicultural mm -hmm. with the music. So mm -hmm. at what point did you realize that you wanted to be an artist? Then moving on to become a producer. Well, it, it's it's it flip flop. Mm -hmm. I started as an artist down Southwest rapping with a group called Hot Ones. Okay. And we used to just rap in my man's basement in South Fast Gardens. And I just, you know, I was just fun. We was kids, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we used to just rap 13, 14 of us in a room with the karaoke and the microphone. So when you press record to record, <laughs> nobody can't mess up. Or we all got to start over and do all it again. Over. So when somebody mess up, damn, cuz, what you doing? We got to do for Exactly. Versus. So it started like that. And then my cousin uh, went to the Northwestern with the school in Maryland for his last year. Okay. Um, and he met a guy who introduced him into a program to a program called FL Studio. Okay. Which is a, um, a music program. And, you know, he came down Southwest. He was like, yeah, so I'm going to just, y'all can do that rap stuff. I'm going to start making beats. I was like, yeah, you do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you stay can, in your lane. You and can I stay do that. And I'm going to stay over here. And then because we was together all the time, um, I started making beats. Mm -hmm. And... That's how it all got started. And then, you know, we was trying to mimic Swiss Beats and Pharrell and, and Kanye mm -hmm. and Timberland, mm -hmm. who were the, the guys at the time the, ahead of me. And that's how I learned how to make beats, by make mimicking the beats. them. And then we was like, yo, we need a style. Like, we need something to make us original. We was like, yeah. we got to go. We from here. The go-go. You know what that, I mean? And so we started doing that. As original as it's it's gonna get. Start sprinkling beats around. I start hitting the streets, hitting platinum nightclub back in the day. Just I see you've done a lot of yeah. nice work. I see you've done some work and some projects with mm. Wale, Tiana Taylor, mm. just to name a few. Mm. You know what I mean? So and I'm sure the list goes on and on, but what were those experiences like to have to work with them? Well, me and Wale started together. We actually responsible for rap in DC. That sound that makes me sound it's weird to say that. Because before us no. it was it's weird because I'm like, I don't want to take away from what we have done, even though I kept it homegrown within mm -hmm. that. Now yeah. it's it's grown to something beyond that, but we really started the rap movement because we had nonchalant before us. Mm -hmm. We had a few rappers I before us. That. Who, yeah. yeah, yeah, five o'clock in the morning. That was a, a classic, but we talking about the actual movement where we actually influenced the kids 
to be rappers. Through the music. That's you feel me? So it that. started there. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, that's, that's how Wale grew. He grew because of the sound that we provided behind him, which was the DC sound. Yeah. It, had, it was familiar to it's us. It's a different sound. It's an awesome sound. Yeah. So is there an artist that you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? Uh, yeah, Miguel, man. I, I like Miguel's stuff. Oh, that would be yeah, a dope Miguel's collaboration. Yeah, fire. Him, uh, I like Kendrick. Me and Meek has done some stuff. That would uh, be a dope collaboration. I'm a, yeah, I like. Yeah. I listen to yeah. a bunch of stuff. Like, it's a guy named um, Tempe Impala. He's an alternative uh -huh. artist. He's yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah I heard yeah. him. Yeah. So that's, that's another one. But, it's you know, I, I kind of took a... I step out the, the production game for like two years yeah. to finish my CDs and my artist stuff and to get things together so I can get that in motion and get back to the production. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And start working at it as an artist. But no, yeah, that's that why I am sense. now. So no, I just put out perfect. a new single with CCB called Sassy. I uh, heard that. Featuring Kiki and CCB. Yeah, it's pretty dope. That's really dope. You yeah. took the word, you beat me to it. That, <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. That's, that's super dope yeah. for sure. So talk to me a little bit about America. Okay. That video was super dope. Yeah. Like, you just, I think I watched it at least four or five times. Oh, thank you. Just the sound, the words, the meaning, everything. So you guys, if you get a chance, make sure you go to YouTube. You can look up Tone P and find the America video there. But what was the mindset behind that video? Uh, yeah, I'm up on politics a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can uh, tell. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of just... I just watch what's going on a lot. You know what I mean? I like to know what's going on around me mm -hmm. so I can always have, I can make the best decisions. Yes, you, know you have I mean? to be prepared and ready. In general. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's just one area. So I was just, I, I really was just, I think it was like election time at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was just seeing a bunch of things that I just had issues with. And I just right, put wanted on to bring it to the floor. Yeah, I, I really wrote that song in like five minutes. <laughs> the whole thing, both verses. And I, because I, it was on my, it was on my mind. And when I have something on my mind, it's just, if I have a it beat flows. and it and it fits, mm -hmm. it comes out. And the opposite for me, if it doesn't work, it'll take me all day to try to figure out something. Right. So no, it, that makes sense. Yeah, it just came out like, and it came out dope and it came out like a like a rocky mm -hmm. alternative rap record. So oh, I was no, like, it's it kind of cool. It yeah. was really, really dope. And then uh, sure. what's his name? Chavez Gambino came and stole. Uh, well, stole uh. He came and just wiped my idea <laughs> out with America because his version was dope. Like his yeah. America song was fire. Yeah, everybody was calling my phone like, bro. Child just didn't did your record. I'm like, nah, he did his own record. And no, the, and that that's key. Yeah. The fact that you can give him his blessings oh, absolutely. and still stay in your lane too. Yeah. We, we don't do enough of that. Yeah, you I, know I, what I mean? You, you guys like, are both stole great my stuff. No, in your own right. No, I, not, I love that. Yeah. Great. It's that's enough really platform good. for everybody. I agree. Me? And I, I and it's like it's one song. Not. You can make other songs. Absolutely. Like, somebody can't steal every song you make. No. And I'm not saying he stole that either. I'm just saying like No, I get what you're saying. Right. No. You just have to be creative, be consistent, and mm. be authentic like you are to yourself and just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, everybody sees that. You know what I mean? So what's next for you? I know you have the new album mm -hmm. that's out. So before we get into where everybody can buy it, what your social media handles are, mm -hmm. what's next for you? Um, It's the same mission I started with. Mm -hmm. It's not really a next, it's just a continuation. Right, it's I like just, that. It's putting on for the city. Mm -hmm. It's putting on for the area. And you don't have to be here to do that. You know what I mean? I take the area with me. That's, That's why I, sonically I have the sound that I have. You know what I mean? So I can be in Rome. I could be in Paris. I could be in Australia. Mm. And I'm still doing the same and stuff still doing the that same represents stuff. where we come from. And then when I do interviews there and they ask you, like, oh, my God, this, this sound, what, what is this from? It's from Washington, D.C. Absolutely. That's what I grew up culture. with. So it's culture. And if we want Go Go to grow, which, you know, I talk to Big G about all the time, which I mm -hmm. talk to, you know, uh, my man Darren X, you know, white, white boy from Red Essence, a bunch mm -hmm. of people in the city. Yeah. We got to we gotta spread our wings. That's true. You know what I mean? If we, were, if we want this thing to That's grow, we want to be respected. We got to spread our wings and start making things with people in other places to be receptive to it. You know what I mean? So that's just, that's what I'm doing. So that's what no, this that's album great. is. It's called, well, I haven't said it to nobody yet. No, it's called definitely. Drop. That's what it's called. And it's featuring for. Um, all, like a lot of top DMV rappers mixing in with the Go-Go community. Okay. Guys like Will the Rapper, uh, Light Show, Crank Lucas, CCB. Um, uh, who else is on the album? Uh, Bo Young Prince, Vish. Uh, so those are Black. artists that are outside They're of all DC. No, those Just, are artists from DC. Okay. 
but they're all prominent artists that's doing their thing from Good. DC and I'm mixing in with the go go sound and all that. So I love that. That's that's what this album is about. I love that. Yeah. And you said the album is called Drop. It's called Drop. Perfect. I haven't said that to nobody yet. It's, I you're love the first. that. I love yeah. that. It's an exclusive, guys. You guys heard it first here. I absolutely love that. So where can everybody get the album Drop? Um, well that's Drop will be out next month. Okay. Yeah. So I just dropped it. Drop the bomb on. on uh oh. Here. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I love uh, that. The album be out next month on all platforms. Um, but I got a new single that we working that's featuring um, World of Rapper, um, Light Show, and Craig Lucas. It's called an AAL, AAL the band. AAL. It, yeah. It's okay. called. Uh, um, it's called Drop. Okay. Actually, self-titled song. Gotcha. Also, but too official, but it's dropped too. So it's called too official. Perfect. Yeah. So. I got to get you back here. Yeah, absolutely. So you can perform yeah. two of those at least. Yeah, absolutely. I got to gotta get it. you on that stage back there. Yeah. For sure. Actually, I was back there earlier. <laughs> you was checking it out? Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a yeah. nice stage, so I got to get you back there. Yeah. Got to get you on the stage to perform. Um, so before we end, mm -hmm. I appreciate you. It was an honor having absolutely, you here. Friend. Thank you. For sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tell everybody what your social media handles are and how they can contact you. Um, social media handles, um, all platforms is Official Tone P. Um, and my website, you can check it for, you know, updates, media, uh, new song releases um, at ToneP.com. Thank you so much. You guys, we will be right back. We're going to take a quick break. Do you or anyone you know have a business or a brand you want to promote? Would you like to be a guest or be a part of our studio audience? If so, contact us at theshellyroyshow at gmail.com or contact us on Instagram at theshellyroyshow. Can't wait to hear from you guys. Hail the man accused of being a drug kingpin, 53-year-old Antoine Jones seemed amazed himself. You had a person who's in his sperms and you got two well-experienced prosecutors with paralegal sitting at the table, with FBI detective. Acting as his own lawyer with a 12th grade education, he took on the feds in the U.S. District Courtroom and fought them to a draw last month, a six to six hung jury. No evidence of drugs on me, with me, in my club, in my houses, in my Jeeps, nowhere but they expect a jury to convict me. Jones hasn't been free since his arrest in October 2005 when he owned two DC nightclubs, Killy's Cafe in Northwest and Levels in Northeast. Police stopped Levels manager Lawrence Maynard for speeding in Jones's minivan. They found 69,000 cash inside. I had two clubs. I deal with cash money. A later raid of this house in Fort Washington, Maryland, yielded nearly two million in cash and cocaine. Agents said it was Jones's stash house and that a GPS they'd secretly put on his Jeep proved he'd been there. That house had no ties of relationship to me at all. Nothing. At his first trial in 2006, a jury acquitted Jones of 33 charges but hung up on one conspiracy charge. At his second trial in 2008, another jury found him guilty of that conspiracy count and a judge sentenced him to life in prison. But then the U.S. Supreme Court ruled unanimously that the GPS device agents put on Jones's car without a warrant linking him to the drug house violated the search and seizure Fourth Amendment. His conviction was overturned. In January, prosecutors launched a third trial and Jones didn't like his court-appointed lawyer. 
if your lawyer don't have confidence in you and if your lawyer going to sell you out, you need to go and fight for yourself. U.S. Attorney Ron Machen has declined all comment except for a statement that his office plans to try Jones a fourth time. They know I'm a fighter. If I had to fight a fourth trial, a fifth trial, a sixth trial. Welcome back to The Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my next guest is a prison freedom fighter. So you guys help me welcome Mr. Antoine Jones. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we were just sitting here talking. Mm -hmm. You have such an amazing story, some of which we're gonna try to walk through. Okay. Um, but before we get into that, um, tell everybody who Antoine Jones is and what's your story. Well, Antoine Jones is a Washingtonian all my life. Mm -hmm. Love Washington. Um, basically a laid back, quiet dude. Most people would talk about me and they'll put a 10 on a one. And you were like, well, he's quiet. He don't say nothing. So but, wait, you said a 10 on a one? You, you got to school us <laughs> now to say what? Yeah, but. 10 on a one that, that they will put me up here. Gotcha. But, but if I speak, I, I would stay humble. Gotcha. You, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love so, that. So, so basically, um, I'm a fighter. You know what I'm saying? I'm a warrior all my life. Just growing up, you know, with my parents, they, they kept pushing me. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was a man child gotcha. at a little kid. So okay. at actually at about nine years old, I'm basically taking care of my family like I was a dog. Wow. So I, I was honorable. a mature uh, uh, young man. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in high school um, for two jobs, eight hours going to high school. So basically I was always a type of person, Very mature. mature and mm -hmm. always want to help the next person. Go-getter, I love so, that. So, you know, I, we came up through the, um, the projects not having. Yeah. So my dream was to become a millionaire. And I, I made it. Absolutely. I made it the wrong way. Yeah. But it, 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 it got took a long from it. But it, it was good, you yeah. You definitely learned from yes. it. So, segueing into that, um, with that being said, in your own words, in your experience, explain to me what a prison freedom fighter is? Well, up Lee County, USP, we had a group of guys. Mm -hmm. And every penitentiary I've been to, I stayed in the low library. Okay, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I had enough sense to know that I had to learn the, no, the, the law and learn the Constitution. Yes. If I wanted to come home with the blessing of God. Amen. So the group, we called ourselves freedom fighters because we was fighting for our freedom. Yes. And you have jailhouse lawyers. The jailhouse lawyers are the guys that you pay, and they help you out. Ever since I've been in from D.C. jail to the penitentiary, I always was the person to help somebody or teach a person gotcha. how to help themselves. Gotcha. So, so you were the one that they actually paid? No, nah, they paid the jailhouse lawyer. Oh, I is, thought you were the jailhouse no, lawyer. No, we, okay. we free to fight. I, I, don't, I don't take money from somebody that I'm helping. Right. So a jailhouse lawyer where you would pay that person, mm -hmm. but a freedom fighter like myself, I would help you out. Right. Because I want you to even do better or, you know, get your freedom get out too. The situation. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, the other question I was going to ask you, um, cash, cocaine, but no conviction. Okay. What does that mean to you? I read that in the article. That was, that <laughs> yeah. was the, that, the headlines. That, you know, um, the Washington Post, they funny. <laughs> because at first, it was like, let's kill this person. I mean, they just damaged me. You know, mm -hmm. and they, they damaged, damaged me because, you know, they they, they, they depressed. Yeah. And they the Washington Post, so it's going to go all over the United States. Right. Um, they get to create the narrative. Yes. And, you know, I always give God the glory. Amen. And then to, to cash cocaine and no conviction, they brought in a million dollars of, of cash. They brought in 100 kilos. And they, they brought in. they got from you? Well, they got from the stash house. Got from, okay. Yeah, they got from the stash house. So all with all this on the table and all the little things that they did, all these witnesses are saying that we did this and did that, at the end, we got to quit it. Amen. And Give it up, that, guys. That's major. A million dollars of cash yeah. and cocaine to get and it quitted. It was like a, a sideshow. They, 
They brought their family in. They was, they was, I mean, they was taking pictures. And we was like, is this a courtroom? Right. So, because they, they actually thought that they was going to win. Because mm-hmm. this is, this is the United States Attorney Office, the biggest, the largest, the most powerful law firm in the world. And we supposed to be some, some, some um, blacks that they just going to destroy. Mm-hmm. But God was on our side. We was blessed. I never heard so many acquittals. And it was like count one, acquittal, a count two, acquittal, Amen. count three. Won't he do and it? It, it was so so many that the courtroom was crowded with federal agents. And you could just see them slowly leave, leaving till the prosecutor like was wanted. Yeah, they didn't mm-hmm. turn out. So like I say, we give God a glory. All my co defendants, they went home. They So was, did you lead that effort with you equipping yourself and you being in the law library to study you know, on the, the different laws and things that they so, so did you lead that effort of your co-defendants? Yes. Um, okay. The, the effort was really, they put me in a corner that I had to learn the law. Mm-hmm. Yes. They put me in total separation. I mean, it's like the whole time is to get me away from everybody. Right. So away from the COs, away from the populations, because they figure if... I'm a way that everybody else will get weak and turn against me. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't know was they put me in a cell where nobody could talk to me. And I had a Bible. I had a Georgetown law. You know, I'm a workout fitness. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I could break down and and mentally just give up. Right. But I, I read the Bible at a certain time. And I read the Georgetown Law. It's about this big. Mm-hmm. So I say, give me every law book that there is out there. Yes. And I self-taught myself the law. So when I thought it was time, I called my lawyer and say, get me back in front of the judge. I'm ready. Yeah. And when I got back in front of the judge, she had to stop because everything that I was saying, the prosecutors, nobody, they wasn't ready for it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't know how I learned the law so Absolutely. quick. But like I say, I had, I'm, I'm in the cell 23 hours a day, one hour to go to wreck. So it, it, it was a choice. I could do like the rest of the uh, uh, um, inmates, throw manure on COs and cussing and yelling. And so I'm like, I toned you that out. Your time wisely. Thank you. That's, That's what absolutely I did. amazing. So throughout this journey with you and what you experienced and learned with the justice system. Right. How would you say this has impacted you both negatively as well as positively? Well, I thank God because really I should be at a mentally broke down. Yeah. I mean, I should have been by yourself. That'll break anybody down. They, I mean, then they put me in um, another place where we call the devil. Then, which is worse than it's like everything they did was to break me Mm. mentally. And hope that I never come home. They, mm-hmm. I, I really thought they was trying to put me in a place so I could get hurt. And because it's, it was something about what the judge said to them. He's going to be back. Because, she, you know, the judge is, is, is biased and, yes. and, and prejudiced. Yes. And so the judge basically helped them. The first trial after cash cocaine and convention, no convention, they went back and got me reindicted. But now, not with my black co-defendants, they brought back all these cartel leaders. Wow. And it's like now I'm in a whole. They try to stack it up. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but the, the thing was, they wasn't, in, they wasn't in jail with me. So it was just me. So all these people that they put up here and said that this is what I did mm-hmm. with wasn't there. Wow. So it's, it's almost like politics. Even with the criminal justice system, they have politics. With me, they can get um, raises. They can um, um, get positions that my prosecutor, after he beat my case on the second trial, he became the chief uh, uh, prosecutor. The the lady prosecutor, she went to a big firm. Everybody just got a raise. That's normally what happens when it's a high-profile case like that. Everybody gets elevated. So you guys, we're going to talk a little bit about Antoine's movie and 
the spinoff of this being basically a true story of his life. I definitely want you guys to follow him, learn more about his story. The impressive part about you and your journey, right. you know, through your self-taught teaching and learning, you stood up to the government and you won, which Thanks. was amazing. So let's, let's give it up for him. Because it's, it's the power is in the knowledge and the ed education. And if you don't have that, right. then you don't have a chance. Yes. So talk to me about Pro Se Litigator. I know it's a big film, which right. is based on your life story and yes. everything that you went through. I know that you guys are going to begin the filming this week. Yes. Talk to me about that and what that means for you. That's major. Right. Um... What it means to me is something that the Lord blessed me with. I, what I say, the Lord invested it into me when he gave me grace and mercy mm -hmm. and allowed me to come back home. Amen. Because all my life I've been a leader with my crew, everybody I've been a leader. But I was a manipulator too. Mm -hmm. So meaning that when I was sitting there thinking that, hey, the Lord made me a leader, but I was doing the wrong things. But now... I'm out here doing the right thing. Right. So the pro se litigator, first the pro se, a lot of people didn't know what it mean. And I'm like saying, Twan, why would you use that? People don't know what it mean. Well, I educate said, us. Then we're going to educate you. Yes. And it just means representing yourself. And wow. that's, that's basically what it is. It got different uh, definitions. Mm -hmm. But, but in, in terms short. of law, it yeah. means that you're speaking for yourself. Okay. And a lot of people should speak for themselves, especially when you see your lawyer. And you see what's going on. Absolutely. And you facing all this time. That's stop. the hard part. I yeah. mean, I've never been through anything like right. that. And I pray to God I won't ever have to go through anything like that. But right. I know in a situation like that, like you said, you know your situation. You know what happened to you. You know right from wrong. But I just right. think sometimes being faced with that situation, it can be very intimidating. And so sometimes you just kind of not take a back seat, but you kind of trust your attorney, that they're the expert and the expert and that they're going to guide you in the right direction. Right. You, you're right. Uh, I'm going to say intimidating. Yeah. I, when I was in the penitentiary, it was a lot of guys that straight out everybody scared of. Mm -hmm. And I make them come to the library. I said, you come to the library. I'm not your slave. But when I got them there, I see them sweating. So when they're dealing with law mm. and the language of law, the average person is, is intimidating. It's very intimidating. So I start realizing that. That's why we start helping people, right? Mm -hmm. But the Pro Se Litigator Project was, it's a project that I, it's a platform. And it's a platform that's going to teach people um, and educate them about the law. It's so the, needed. The Constitution, their civil rights. So it's going to be entertaining you know, like, like the, but the informative. Yeah, informative, like the young brother. I'm about bringing this play because I could have did it in Atlanta mm -hmm. and I got paid. Yes. I could have did it in L.A. and I got paid. Mm -hmm. So I decided to say, you know what, I'm going to decline and I'm going to do it where my road to redemption is. Amen. And, and, and Washington, D.C. is where I made my mistakes. Mm -hmm. So this right here is, is my return Correcting to... Some of those. There yeah. you go, correcting yeah. my mistakes. So the, the, the platform is, is, is entertaining mm -hmm. because with these young guys, you know, especially these guys, when you're saying you want to stop the peace, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a vital interrupter. I work with these young guys. They all want to be stars. This is something that they will switch over mm -hmm. and say, all right, Twan, we'll put the guns down to come with you. Yeah. And this is where the education, I believe in empowerment. That is so important. The I believe, influence. Yeah, that I believe so in self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. These are the things what this project is. You know, it's, it's, it's not just about, uh, 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 it's 72 episodes. You know, I wrote 72 episodes. I wrote two spinoffs. I wrote a documentary. I wrote a, a movie. I was a spy Amen. that said, you know, I'm going home. How can I help my people? I did my research and I see... You know, I had two clubs, so I, I understand the, uh, the entertainment business. Right. Mm -hmm. So my thing is to use this just for a platform. For the platform. You know, I can't take it with me well, when I pass. you got a voice and people are actually listening. So 
for a pro se litigator, the young man who's playing that character, are you working closely with him? I yeah. ask that because it's helpful to help that person embody the character that they're playing. Right. Um, that's Malachi Monique. Okay. Uh, he's down to earth. Mm -hmm. um, his cousin, I know his cousins. Everybody told him about me. Mm -hmm. So he, he kind of see that I was down to earth. So we talk, I mean, he, we kick it over the phone, we text, and once he get here, I can consult him. And basically, he's from D.C. Okay. You know, so he's from D.C., he, um, he know the city, he been at the, the same barbershop that I probably went to cut hair, get my hair cut, mm -hmm. he been there. So it's, it's not that, it, he just got to learn my mannerism, my mm -hmm. which is basically, you know, a lot of people like I don't really talk a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, I've been invited to a lot of interviews. I'm like, man, I'm, you know, because I'm really laid back and quiet. Well, I'm honored that you decided uh, to yeah. take this interview. Right, and and, and what, like what the young man said, it's time for me to do my part. Absolutely. It's not that I can't speak mm -hmm. because I can't speak because I speak to the young people. I love it's that. It's just that I'm a thinker. I think, think, think more than talk. And I lead by example. That's but, what we need. Yes. That is that is so key, and I appreciate you. Uh -huh. um, tell everybody where they can look out for Pro Se Litigator, and then also what your social media handles are. Okay. Um, the Pro Se Litigator Project, um, I haven't put my website out. I will put my website out. You can follow Antoine Jones on Facebook. Uh, you can follow like a two the Pro Se Litigator Project on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not one of the ones that know the social media, yes. the numbers That's and that. Okay. I got people who help me with that. Okay. But you put in Antoine Jones, you're gonna all kind of stuff gonna come up. Perfect. And and, and it it'll hook you up to the Facebook. Perfect. You guys were so amazing. You guys be sure to check out Pro Se Litigator. I want to thank you so much to tonight's audience, all of my guests, Diamond Mint Collection, Miss. Ebony, Miss Diamond, thank you so much. And can't forget you, Mr. Tone P. Can't wait to have you back. And last but not least, Mr. Antoine Jones. You guys, thank you for continuing to support me. You guys have a great night. Thank you.